Renee. Hi, Renee. <laughs> What's going on? How are you feeling? Oh my goodness. So many emotions, so many feels. I'm in my feels for sure. I hope you're doing well as well. <laughs> yes, I absolutely am. It is a beautiful day. The sun is shining, so can't complain with that. Let's get right into this because I'm super excited. Uh, so first off, talking with Anika in the HOH room about her plans for who wins POV, how confident were you about her telling you that Ty wasn't going to use it if he won? Oh, how confident was I in her telling yeah. me that? Oh, I knew that he was going to use it. So she's telling me this and I'm like, yeah, you think, um, but he will use it. And so seeing her naiveness to that was, was kind of funny from my end. And that was actually like a valuable nugget of information that I had going into that conversation. Um, so I, I knew he was going to use it a thousand percent. I, I think he was dedicated to the initial plan in some regard, in some sense, but who he was going to use it on was going to be a toss up for me. And then also if he was going to execute the final plan, which was keeping that other person, um, either me or Cece, whoever was left on the block. So I, I knew going into my combo with Anika that he was, he was going to use it. So, and we just saw with the double of, you know, what he can do when he's off the block and, and him using these surprise POVs and taking someone off. So I'm, I'm surprised Anika didn't pick up on that, but it, it was a funny conversation to have for that reason. So uh, how do you feel your conversation with Ty went when he asked you what you and Anika talked about in the HOH room? I wasn't too nervous him asking me about it. Like it obviously raised a flag of like, why would that be like super important? But I guess the way it was worded and it was phrased and you know what, like, yes, shining light on that is is not great for his game. However, there's only five of us left. So there it's like, you would have to be really putting on the blinders if you didn't see you going through all the strategies of what plan A, B, C, and D can do. Um, so him bringing it up, I knew was going to raise an argument of some sort or a heated discussion. However, I was pretty confident in the fact that I knew my intentions going into that game, uh, into that conversation with everything I've had to deal, deal with through the game, I've been left out of, of a handful of things. So um, especially at that point, Ty has been someone that has had it out for me to get me out for some time. So I needed to make sure that I was covering my grounds. So when you first hit the block, did you see yourself going home this week? Uh, for this week, I was pretty confident in the fact that there were a few plans that could pan out where I could still stay. I think if CC stayed on the block, I would have stayed. Um, with the way the votes would have went. I think that Ty was somewhat at the time meaningful of him, like pulling someone off and voting the other one to stay. So I thought I was safe in that. The only thing I was worried about was if me and Ty were left on the block at the end of the week, um, because then I don't know the extent of his relationships with Anika and Daniel. And that's what I was really trying to get into with that conversation with Anika, um, just to see where he kind of stood in the house and if I could get a little bit more information on that. And uh, Ty says that's what was the bullet that bit me in the bootay, but I don't think that it was 100% true. I think he's had it out for me for a little bit, and maybe he was intentional at some point to take it forward, but I don't think him maybe realizing that mental comps are coming into play at the end and, and other factors like that uh, spooked him a bit, for sure. Now, let's talk about the Wendy's auction. Uh, what was it like to meet Spicy V? Oh my God, she is so fun. It was so fun seeing her, meeting her. Her energy is infectious. She comes in there, she's serving looks. She's doing the whole thing. She's even on the stand. She has her little mallet or whatever. And I was like, <laughs> she's giving what she needs to give. It was so much fun. Um, I did get quite emotional for that auction. So a lot of feels in that for sure. Yeah, I was going to bring that up actually, because you got really emotional when it came to the bid to speak to somebody from home. And how were you feeling in that moment? Uh, how hard was it to lose that bid? I think, I'm not sure if it, it made it there, but the Spicy was like, what do you think's under this, this thing, Renee? And I was like, a uh, dance lesson? Like, I don't know, I was really thrown off by it being a phone call. And I think everybody knows how much I, I was hoping, a part of me was thinking maybe my Nona was on that other end. And I, love my family of course and I want to hear them too so all of those emotions were like super big that they were literally just a few feet away from me to call um so when I was sitting there I 
you really don't think, I didn't think I was going to be a crier over a letter or a phone call of whatever, but the emotions in that house and how long you're in this bubble and to see that it's like right there. And to know, I, I really did want to bid more on it, but I was a little, I, I was conflicted because it's like, it's Anika's birthday. I don't have a lot of money left and like, or I'm sorry, points left. So just seeing that and realizing like I might have to just watch someone else do this, I think was even more painful because as happy as I am for someone else to get a call, it's like, I feel like I needed it in that moment. Um, so that was a super, super emotional point for me. Uh, do you regret not backdooring Ty? This is an interesting point. I didn't think this was going to be like so shocking, but I, for me at the leg of the game that we were in with the amount of players that we had left, there was a very, very slim chance that Ty would not get picked to use the POV. Um, I mean, sorry, to play in the POV. Um, and for me, leaving him off of the block and giving him the power to keep himself safe and potentially mess up my noms um, were a very big, big part of it because me and Ty, in terms of like who to send home and who to keep and like how to keep working together moving forward, were always on separate pages because I was trying to knock off the people around him so that he would not keep considering me as his second best is how I felt in our situation. So to leave him off was super dangerous. And I think it ended up playing out well for me at the time because we saw then in the double and then in Nika's week, how, what he can do when he's left off the block, because I had a lot of conversations with CC during my HOH week leading up to that, what we were anticipating would be the double um, talking about, we should extend an olive branch maybe then now and keep him off the block to show him that we're not going after him um, moving forward because we felt he was better for our game. Um, but then we did extended the olive branch and, you know, Mr. Ty Ty burnt it real quick because he, he then forced us to do a move that we weren't expecting to do at that time. Okay. Um, do you feel like Claudia could have done more to keep you in the house? Yeah, Claudia, it's it's a really interesting talk. I think I'm now being out of the game and thinking of it a bit more of like just leaving and stuff. I, I feel like she could have fought definitely harder for me. I feel like for a lot of the game in terms of like the nitty gritty strategizing and how to move our team forward as a collective, like I was put in a lot of compromisable positions and I never wavered on my trust with, with them. Um, even when I felt like there were things that they were involved in that I wasn't. Um, so to see Claudia constantly throughout the game, which I didn't pick up on this pattern too, too much until I was in my final week of, or in my most recent week, uh, my eviction week was she tend, she calls it adapting, but I tend to call it like she's jumping ship to find the next safety um, plank to stand on. And I feel like because she felt good once the POV was used on her, it was kind of like, okay, well I tried, but it's like, okay, but you can push a bit harder. But I think she was at a loss regardless because I don't think with Ty, she has that sway. I think I could have, I made more headway with my conversations with Ty than she would. So I had to take it for myself and, and, and just do what I could on my own. Cause I feel like they, as a showman, as a unit, as a whatever uh, duo um, team playing the game, they've never been on the same page of what moves to make. So I don't think he would have heard her out completely. Um, so I think at that point, me and Ty, looked at the game more similarly to where he would hear me out more so I wish just as my alliance member and someone that like we've rode through the thick of thick of things together I wish she did push more for me however I don't think it would have had much sway over time okay um so you had some strong words about Anika and you were wanting to get her out if uh you had won the next HOH uh how do you think Anika has played her game Anika is an interesting one to me because I think in being in the game with her, the one thing I will always, always say about her game that I do respect 101% is coming into it, not a fan, not knowing the game or so she claims she picked up on the game really, really fast. And she was able to give a lot of um, insight and, uh, you know, talk about the game at a really high level, considering she just started learning it so that I will always have respect for However, how she's went about her moves, I've put, I've had Anika's name in my mouth for a very long time. Um, I, I'm sure from the beginning of the season, <laughs> I was throwing Anika's out, name out left and right because I really couldn't get on the same page with her game-wise. One, because she didn't understand I felt to the level that I needed someone to, to work with. But then also because I feel like she does go about the game with a lot of lies and twisting, but she's not very good at maintaining those lies when you call her out on it. She really likes to do the tactic of, what you're saying doesn't make sense. And I'm like, no, no, no. What I'm saying does make sense. You're just, you're twisting what I said. So that 
that's not how I would play the game. I get it. big brother. A lot of people can lie. A lot of people can spin things. Um, I went into it with the mentality. Maybe I might have to tell a white lie or two, but like to consistently lie. And then, you know, I stuck my neck out for her on my week of HOH in order to keep her safe. I could have flipped that boat very quickly. So I was hoping that maybe she would, you know, take that as a solid and, you know, uh, reciprocate it later down the line, but it was a really big risk because Anika is going to do what's best for Anika and she's going to lie if she needs to. So her game's interesting in that sense, but if she can pitch it in a way that, you know, she shows that she was really working hard and she just had to do lies to finish it off, then, then maybe she could sway me for a vote if she ended up at the end, but her game wise, a little slimier than I would like. <laughs> that is Okay, last question. Why did you want to come into the Big Brother Canada house? Um, oh, I have been a fan of the show for a while. I've watched uh, avidly since season three, since I was like 14, which is crazy. And so last season I watched it and I just, I was like, I feel like I could do this. Like, I feel like I could be in there. Um, so I, I wanted to be a part of the process. I, I, even regardless of how far I went or whatever I did, I just wanted to see it from a different side and a different angle. But the strategy. I love the strategy. I am a fanatic for, for looking at the plans and how can we do this and how can we go about this? I'm an overthinker in my regular life. So it's like being in the game and being able to hash things out like that and talk with people who like also want a game and, and do that was, was really my motivation going into it. Oh, love it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for chatting with me, Renee. <laughs> Tell everyone in the jury house I said hello. Of course, I will for sure. And have fun. <laughs> Bye.